Welcome to the Good Rookie Show. My name is Fahim. And my name is Nelly J, y'all. And we are Good Rookie. That's right. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Happy Good Tuesday. And guess what? It's the Good Rookie Show. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. What's going on, y'all? As you know, we're your host coming direct to you from Toronto, Canada, the 6th. Big up all yourself. It's summer league time. It's MLB time. It's Tyson Fury not having his belt gone. It's random showings of people everywhere. It's my boy Scotty Barnes in Vegas with some things. You know what I'm saying? Yo, right now. <laughs> I don't know about that. But <laughs> Yo, well, the video circulating over Scotty walking in Vegas with some things. You know, hey, the young man. Let, let him have his fun, yeah. man. Don't, don't watch that. Don't watch let him live. Doing, let him live. They let him live his life, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's about balance, you know what I'm saying? But not Zion balance, but, you know, balance. Yeah. balance. <laughs> so, um, Fahim, um, you know, a couple of things happened this week. I want to get your quick thoughts on Zion commenting on, on he's 2022, has lots of money, and he's really trying to, to have better, wiser people around him. Um, what, what are your thoughts on Zion really understanding that the right people in the circle are going to affect his, his circumstances? You got it, Fiend. Oh, that's great. I didn't even hear about that. It's the first time I'm hearing about this right now. Uh, good. Um, I must say I'm a little surprised. He's Zion Williamson, who didn't just end up like a Fred Van Vliet, somebody who ended up uh, maybe over-exceeding. Uh, he came from Duke, highly touted. Uh, in the league, highly touted. Just the fact that it's t- now taken three seasons uh, for him to realize, you know, the kind of influence that he does have. I'm a little shocked, but I guess better late than never. Yeah, I, I mean, big up to uh, Bleacher Report for reporting it on that today. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I agree with you, right? He made a comment. This is on um, on how it's hard to, to diet at his age. So he was saying it's hard, man. 20, 20, 22. Um, all the money in the world, but I'm at a point at that point now where because of certain things that I'm putting people around me with wisdom. So Braun got the blueprint, try my best to follow it. So mm-hmm. Zion keeps it real on his health journey. And I think that's on, on like, I think a lot of people are, are dealing with weight challenges, health. And so it's good when players talk about it. You know, I'm rich as hell, but I, I still deal with it. You know what I mean? So money can't solve everything, guys. He really can't. Mm-hmm. No, no. Mm-hmm. And I guess it's an indication that he's he doesn't have the right people around him, which comes back to my original point that I'm actually surprised that this was even allowed to happen on his watch. Mm-hmm. Well, like I said, better late than never. Uh, you know, all the best to him. I know he's got a, a full plate of life. So yes. congratulations to him. And um, all the best going forward. Agreed. Agreed. All right. Um, Nelly J, I want to get your thoughts on a big signing that happened this uh, this free agency. Not from a player standpoint. Um, surprise, not surprise. We understand the reasoning, but I think it's very interesting. Greg Popovich, uh, mm. the legend, Spurs legend. He has just signed a five-year, $80 million extension. Wow. Uh to be with the Spurs to coach and also be the, I think it's the president of operations, basketball operations. He has a front office role also with the Spurs. So uh, another five years, I'll let you go first. I think we understand why. Uh, Just thoughts. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I would love Pop to come to Toronto. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, he's like, I know we talk about the best front office people. I think, you know, like Masai, Pat Riley, Pop. You know what I'm saying? Actually, Brad Stevens, he's making some good moves too. I can't even lie. Brad's been doing some things over there. Um, also, shout out I, to Danny Ainge. Also, he's an excellent. Yeah, yeah, Danny Ainge. So, I mean, I think Pop, I think it's the right move for the Spurs. I think Pop is the brand. Like players coming in and out, but Pop has always been there. I think the first time his team didn't make a playoff or the playoff run ended when not one new season. I think that was what the play-in tournament where like the Spurs lost in the first round. So, Mm -hmm. um, I mean, yeah, like it's at the end of the day, Popovich well-deserved, um, you know, the Spurs made the right move. 
I think the players, I think even players to get players to your team in San Antonio. Hello, <laughs> Pop got to be there for you. What else right. is going to bring you there but Popovich? Um, he's made all everyone better. No one leaves the Spurs and like they're playing less. You understand? You get a Spurs player on your team that was under Pop for even for a year or two. They they're a smarter, higher IQ player. Like mm-hmm. he makes guys better intellectually and on the court. So big up to him. Well deserved. Give him that eighty mil. And let's see how it goes. But I think that's something that needs to be done. And I'm hoping, and I think Duncan works there too. I think they're really keeping yeah, a couple of the core guys there. So, yes, yeah, right. I love how they have so, a pipeline of players, coaches that are not going to help them build that brand. And the best way to build a brand is with past players. You know what I'm saying? Like, no offense to guys that didn't play the game. Yes, you're knowledgeable, you know a lot, and I think you're also valuable to basketball. But I think to recruit, nothing, recruiting is easier when you have a player helping you recruit for your team, you know what I'm saying? Versus like a front office guy. I agree. So let's talk about the Wemby effect, okay? Mm. Uh, Because on draft night, that's one of the questions I had was how much longer, actually it wasn't draft night, it was, yeah, it was the draft pick night. Uh, How many years does that keep uh, Pop around for? Five more years, goes Mm. show their commitment there uh, for Wemby on by two, you know, uh, groom him, give him everything he needs. Um, so if, cause if they don't get Wembeyama this year, I don't think he's signing that five-year extension, you know, like, uh, after what happened with the DeMar DeRozan going there and just trying to keep after Kawhi, it was DeMar DeRozan try to keep that didn't happen after that. It was DeJounte Murray, uh, try to keep that didn't happen. So, I mean, this is like generational talent. Um, I would consider, I would consider Tim Duncan, a generational talent also, um, David Robinson, I don't know if I'd say generational talent, but, you know, an elite center up for his time. So Popovich True. has really had uh, a ton of, uh, you know, a ton of players to work with. Um, clearly, the, the DeMar DeRozan's and the DeJounte Murray's were not enough. So with this extra five years now, with Bam Bayamba, with uh, giving a chance to do room and build around him, uh, say, for instance, you know, they don't win one with Wemby. Uh, we know Pop is obviously going to go down as a legend regardless. Um, if, but I think he might have something more to be gained if they do go on, say, three, four, five years down the road and win a championship with Wemby. And he can say he's won one with Duncan. He's won one with Robinson. No, no Robinson didn't win. He won with a Duncan. He's won uh, with, uh, with Wemby. Uh, different generations, different times that might be something to push him into like a, a, an elite status. You know what I'm saying? Not saying he's not it's elite, true. but I'm talking like goat status for, for, uh, for coaching, you know, that's all. What do you got? No, it, it it's true. Like I truly believe to your point that that's something that should be, should be handled. Um, whether that is um, them like updating or whatever. I, I do think that Popovich and Victor, it just makes sense, right? Because, and I made this point too uh, with a few people that I spoke to about Victor, watching him, watching both those games where he played, I felt like Victor, he has this, he has this game where he's not really fitting with everyone. You know what I mean? Like, like his game isn't one thing or the other, right? Like he is, he is not a, a he's not a true five, not a true four, not, like he's, he's, his, his, his role it's going to be so unique and will not fall into a category, I should say, of a traditional position. So I think if anyone can solve this Victor type player type, how, how does this player fit in modern basketball? How do you use a player with this size and length and a skill set in basketball? It could be a breakthrough for a lot of the other guys who are really tall, the bull bulls, who has really haven't found a home yet. You know what I'm saying? Like he's, I don't think he's signed with the team yet. And I think it's because teams don't know how to use these type of players. You're seven, two, three, you're, you're slim. How, like, you can't defend five. You can defend some five, but not all. You know what I'm saying, Fahim? So I think Pop can crack that code, and I'm curious to see how they utilize him. So That's right. And I'm with you in regards to curiosity because uh, Pop, so we look at Phil Jackson, for instance. Phil Jackson had Michael Jordan uh, with the triangle offense, something that uh, Tex Winter, uh, Phil Jackson's assistant actually started, but Phil Jackson has actually kind of uh, got the notoriety for it. But just a matter of, uh, 
you know, you need a special type of unique player to to work the triangle offense. Uh, in yeah. regard to, from what I know, uh, depending on what what position or what situation a person is in, uh, that's the way the offense flows. Um, that got carried over from Michael and Scotty over to uh, Kobe and Shaq, right? And uh, it'd be interesting to see what Phil Jackson, because Wemby, like you mentioned, positionless, it seems. So it'd be interesting to see, because we know Popovich is a very creative coach. So it'd yes. be interesting to see how he decides going for the next five years, he's going to put the pieces around Wemby uh, to make him flourish. So, you know, Nick Nurse got a lot of uh, praise with his box and one defense, you know, like just different innovations to the game. I'm interested to see if uh, Pop has an innovation that he can bring with him, Wemby. Yep, I agree. I agree. Very good point. Um, it's, again, th this experiment, y'all, like him coming in, and just being that great, like how LeBron, other guys have done in the past, it's going to be hard because he can't really defend his position, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you, if you watched I know, the Summer League, there was moments where he couldn't, he, like he was being moved um, or, or, you know, like he couldn't defend that, that big center type, you know, the wider frame, that heavier set type player. It, he didn't look sh that strong, but he can block. You know, like, listen, if Victor can just block a lot of shots, right, will he become a really good rebounder or just excel in that? Just those two things for him. He is a, he's, he's a valid asset to any team, right? So that's why, like, I don't want him to, like, think that he has to be the superstar. Just really f focus on your skill set. Understand what you can and cannot do. And I think Pop is the right person to make him understand that and really get, get him a role and, and get the pieces around him to help him right to excel in the nba mm -hmm. that's why mm -hmm. i feel that five year with pop in the front office for him and the head coach he can recruit he can you know what i mean like that, that now he's more power well he had the power but now he has officially has more power to do more um around personnel changes and contracts so i'm excited for this new role for pop right right shout out to pop um so nelly j now you want to go to the for the culture for the culture, we like to highlight individuals for the culture. And today, Fahim, we're not just highlighting one individual, two, three, four, five. No, we're highlighting 10 Woo! individuals. Actually, no, 10 times two, because we got to also highlight the players. So this year in the NBA draft, Fahim, I was not aware. Okay. Um, I saw this, I stumbled upon it on Instagram and then I looked into it. The NBA draft, Fahim, had top, the, all the top 10 picks were all represented by black agents for the first time in history. What? Mm. Fahim, that is historic. Yep. Um, we talked about Kyrie Irving having a black uh, woman as an agent. Um, that's a first as well for her, right? We talked about Nicole Lynn, you know, um, paving ways for black women in the, in a football agency, um, a representing Jalen Hurts this is trending to a place where I think we all were hoping to get right um having black players in black sports have black agents right and like we're feeding into our culture our community again I'm not saying you can't have a black agent I'm just saying for so long Fahim a lot of agents were not black or there were none right Rich Paul and those guys changed the game big up the clutch and now we're seeing more and more so I'm going to take some time for him. And I really want to just name these agents uh, because I think they deserve it. So let's go, y'all. All right. Number one pick, Victor. We all know who that is. His agent was, Bo um, oh gosh, Fahim, you know me and name, but y'all listen. If I butcher your name, please have grace for your girl, Nelly J. Okay. This is not that counts. Go ahead, Nelly J. Una Diaye um, and Daye. I'll do that. And Daye. Uh, he's a French basketball agent and founder of uh, CEO and CEO of Calm Sport, right? And that's perform. So he's the agent for Victor and uh, love the fact. Big up to you, brother. Brandon Miller. His agent's name is Wil Wilmer M. Jackson Spencer, and he's the agent for Spencer Sports Management. So big up to Mr. Wilner. Big up to you. We got our third pick, which was Scoot Henderson. His agent, Steve Haney. Haney is the agent for Parlay Sports Entertainment, and he signed an historic seven-figure multi-year endorsement contract with Puma. Um, so, um, you know, Scoot Henderson, 
His agent got him a multi-year contract with Puma, right? Victor signed with Nike. Fahim, the agents are cooking right now for these wonderful black uh, athletes. So big up to them. Um, we do have Eamon and Osder Thompson, the Thompson twins. Yes, their agents are black. The first twins to ever, or brother to be ever drafted in the top five in NBA history. Their agent is called, his name is Troy Thompson. And he's with GAPP, so Gap Sports Group. So big up to Mr. Troy Thompson. Then we got, um, you know, Anthony Black. I was shocked he was so high, but here we go. He was a sixth pick, Bill Duffy. Bill Duffy, he's the agent for the WME Sports. Then we got, of course, Bilal Kulibale. Uh, Bilal Kulibale? Kulibale? Bale. I don't know. <laughs> but big up to Bilal. Um, his agent, uh, he's also a French star for him. He played with Victor. His age is also the same age as Victor. So uh, Buna and, and, Dia, and Daye, he is also the agent of Victor and Bilal. So he had two players for him, two in the top 10. Big up to him. Jerace Jer Walker, his agent was Joe Branch and Bill Duffy, both from WME. All right. So big up to um, them. And of course, Taylor Hendricks dropped at number nine with the Utah Jazz. His agent was Raymond Brothers and there with I Am Sports and Entertainment. And last but not least, Kaysen Wallace, OKC Thunder picked him up. His agent, Marcus Monk. And he's also with Excel Sports Management. So first of all, big up to Afrotech for, for the details. Woo! You know what I'm saying? Um, respectfully, I apologize for butchering the name. Um, you know, have grace on me, but Fahim, what's your <laughs> thoughts on 10 players, all black, drafted in top 10 with 10 black agents? You got it. Well, wow. Well, you mentioned right off top about, uh, you know, Rich Paul. And I like when you said uh, it's the agents and it's times two, because the players are also involved also. Uh, you know, Rich Paul, he happened to get his chance by LeBron James. So, you know, certain things in regards to Pioneer, then maybe we could say that Le LeBron uh, has spearheaded uh, the inclusion of black sports agents. Because mm -hmm. let's be honest, uh, if, if LeBron doesn't do it, perhaps someone would have came along and did it. Um, but it's good that LeBron kept it in-house and did that. So yes. um, 10, no, all 10. Uh, the league's 80% black. Uh, to have such representation with agents goes to show that um, there is a lane and there's a, a, an avenue for uh, black black agents uh, to get into it. Now, there's uh, one in particular. Uh, his name. So his name's Chris Gaston. He's not in the top ten, mm -hmm. right? But uh, Chris Gaston, he's of a family first sports agency. Uh, mm -hmm. He started his agency. Uh, he was. Uh, working in, in Houston, in, in AAU. And then from there, he was actually working in marketing, I think, for the Houston Rockets. Uh, he branched out after doing some work with the Rockets and said he's going to start his own. Um, he doesn't have quite the big uh, clients as of yet, but he does have two clients that I did notice uh, that are worth mentioning. Um, one is De'Aaron Fox, who is uh, NBA's... Mm -hmm. Uh, clutch player of the year. Yes. And another one in which we've talked about in regards to agency, which I want to bring up to you is Nerlens Noel. Now, oh. do you remember? <laughs> I'm so, I was choked on my, I, I choked to my <laughs> fucking, god damn for you. <laughs> Yo, when you... keeping it real goes wrong, man. Nerlens Noel. <laughs> the, I don't know who's worse, better than yourself, him or, 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 or Dennis Schroeder, yo. Two, two uh, hours well, of the of, of the of the past five uh, years. Oh man, hey, in Ireland. So you got you know, a new agent now. Presentation huh? somewhere. So you know, I know that uh, this uh, this agent wasn't the top ten, like we mentioned, but I yeah. still do like the fact that you know it just goes to show the come up uh, that there can be. Uh, you can work uh, for the league, or you can uh, find your way in in you know, unconventional times, perhaps before where they want you to maybe go to school and get a degree. Um, it's about relationships. And that's why he actually named his agency Family First Sports because um, he's just trying to build it on family, right? So, uh, you know, shout out to him. Definitely shout out to uh, the agents. I'm really interested to see if we got 10 in, in the top 10. That means there's clearly a presence. Um, I'm just wondering 
So agents normally, uh, white, black, regardless of color, uh, we really don't know a lot. There aren't like a lot of high profile agents. You know, let's be real. Chris Paul is only a high profile agent because of his client, right? Um, I'm just wondering to see over time, the more we get black representation for these, maybe not the next LeBron, but the next superstar, um, when those will be more like kind of household names. And then that can maybe inspire even more kids, you know, because even this being a top 10, um, having representations, it really hasn't been much news. You know what I'm saying? And that's something that you would figure uh, that would make news and that would maybe inspire more people to get into the field. And I'd still, I think they're, uh, we're, we're still sh- short of, of getting to that point at this point. Mm-hmm. I agree. Like everything you said is such, is really good. I do also want to add something as well. Fahim, let's like three years ago, let's be real. They had the Rich Paul rule. The NCAA tried the thing. They, they tried a whole thing where they wanted to implement this damn rule that required agents to have a bachelor's degree to serve as an agent. Like, right. and that came out of left field. It was like, what? Why would I have a degree NCAA to rep a player? Right. No. Right. Because they, they knew that, right, as we know, in, in North America, a lot of black, not every black person is going to have a degree, a bachelor's degree, not a college, a bachelor's degree. Hell no. So um, they try to ting, you know, ting mash up. But I think <laughs> it was, you know, the power structure in place were threatened, right? right? That we have more of a cultural relationship and and like rapport naturally, which right. they have, have, have been doing for the past, you know, century. <laughs> so, you know, karma is a B. I do, mm-hmm. I do want to pick up some of the guys who've had black agents for a while, right? So, you know, Rich Paul, he got LeBron, AD, Ben, Draymond. I think Rich Paul, listen, if Rich Paul can make Freddie get 43 million, get that man a trophy. He, for him, that man better be in a hoop hall of fame. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, I don't, I don't know if agents make it to hoop hall for him, but he needs to get one. Cause that's, that's the biggest, like, what? Hello. <laughs> I think Rich before, Paul, be- like you said, before you, before you continue mm-hmm. on off of the Fred Van Vliet, real quick, I want to throw this in. I just found out this week, Fred Van Vliet and Kyrie Irving mm-hmm. signed a contract on the same day. Yes. Fred Van Vliet makes more money than Kyrie Irving. Yeah. Because Kyrie didn't want to go to Houston. I, I, who knows if that Jillian Green video was a prop, was an issue for him. I'm just, who knows? But oh, um, anyway, you got it, Nelly J. He's like, man, who knows? But yeah, I mean, I know. I know Houston was talking to uh, Kyrie and Freddie Fahim. So, um, and, and we don't know what happened in those rooms. If, if Kyrie, I remember, remember what happened. Kyrie picked Dallas first and then Fred, Freddie was available, right? Because I, I think Kyrie had the probably more of a, I mean, come on. If you can have Kyrie Irving or Fred, who's going to pick Fahim? You know what I'm saying? So once Kyrie made a decision, you notice after he just, he signed with Dallas, that everything kind of, you know, trickled down a little bit. But, you know, again, no slight to to Fred, get your money, brother, but Rich Paul got him that money. He did a whole bunch of podcasts last year, had a nice narrative driven, you know, um, Perkins was speaking up on Ting Pond, Pond ESPN. So big up to Rich Paul. He also has um, folks like Chase Young, um, Jeff ok- Okuda, right? And um, they're top three picks in 2020. So, of course, Jalen Hurts is under clutch sports. So, Rich Paul is really empowering people of color, black agents who, again, theme three years ago, it was a struggle thing. So I'm loving it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm hoping we see more of this. And, you know, black people are intellectual, right? We were we were deemed as inferior in that regard. That's why a lot of quarterback positions were not given to us as well. Or point, you know what I'm saying? So now the, the respect is there. We have people of color owning or in front offices now. So I think the landscape of how of people working in sports are going to change. It's going to change. So I love mm-hmm. this. That's why all those agents are for the culture. Big up to the players who, who actually put trust in those guys to represent them. Big up to the parents for also trusting those agents to, to take care of their kids. So big up to every agent in that top 10. Of course, all the black agents that are out there hustling and working with these uh, amazing athletes so yeah yeah great progress great to see all right now dj let's close this out 
with That's Absurd. That's Absurd for you, bro. What was absurd this week? What was absurd? Wow. We just spoke about Victor when Bayama before at the top. Uh, we have to now include him and also a pop superstar. Oh, man. <laughs> Britney Spears. Who, a name that I don't think we've ever mentioned on our podcast before. And this is... <laughs> what are we on right now? And what number is this? 152. 152. We went 152 straight weeks and not mentioned Britney Spears on our... our no, our... I mean, we're sports and culture. I don't know <laughs> She's, she's well, she's old, slipped, but you know, go off. <laughs> she slipped her way in. All right, so she made uh, it. <laughs> there was an instant where Britney Spears had allegedly, and there is actually video evidence, but she grabbed Rimp Victor, trying to get his attention when he walked walked past, and his bodyguard hit her in the face. The fact that we have Britney Spears and Victor in the same category. We're going with absurd. Absurd. So first of all, Fahim, did, did you watch the video? I did. did you watch it? Okay. I did. I did. So I did. first of all, Britney, Britney, I love you. You know, I'm a slang. How are you? You know, like I remember that stuff. Okay. I knew the routine. Like, listen, hon, um, that was back <laughs> in the day. Uh, you can't be running up to people. After COVID, guys, don't be please, y'all. Do not run up to anyone like and tap them when they're a when they're a superstar. Victor's a superstar now. He's not a superstar, like he's a superstar. He hasn't played a game, but he's a like the, like the, they're all giving him the keys to to drive this league. Okay. He's the next LeBron. They're, everyone's calling him that, right? So you can't just run up to like this kid and tap him on his back and be like, hey. Wow. And if you look for him, the, the security guard didn't even see her face. He saw a hand touching his client and his job is to secure. So he was trying to move your hand, but your face went into his hand. So you hit his hand, Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, listen, I just listen, guys, please, please, y'all respect people's boundaries, women and men. I think sometimes, you know, we don't we forget that people have boundaries. Not you can't just touch anyone anymore for him. Mm. You can't do like that. That that is dead. So before you touch someone, you know you you try to get their attention. You you can see, she could have said, "Hey, Victor, it's it's me, Britney Spears," or walk up and be like, "Hey, security guard, I'm Britney Spears. I know the client. Can we speak?" Like Britney, you were a you were your star. That's, okay, let me let me hold on. So that's where I was gonna go with this. This is Britney Spears. She should be no stranger to how the security <laughs> operations work. Thank you. Like in her heyday, she she couldn't walk anywhere without security. So Thank just you. just the fact that you know maybe well clearly she doesn't need security now, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, you know just the fact that she went over, tapped him, and then kind of while Victor should be focusing on basketball. Uh, he has to deal with this in his practice the next day with a lot of media asking what happened. That's something that's completely out of his control. He was told by his security to keep walking regardless because if he stops, he's going to have a mob around him and they'd want to avoid the mob. So, Especially in Vegas? Yo, yeah. Vegas yeah. is a mod punk, mad ting. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Busy out there. So of course you would do that. You know what I'm saying? Of course. So Brittany just... <sighs> Respect the fact that, you know, you're, even though your time is done, someone else is on the rise and she shouldn't try and kind of get him off his pivot, which is basketball. And if it wasn't recorded, who knows? Say, for instance, someone didn't have it oh on Oh, my record. gosh, Fahim. It would have been. Like, a- that, that, <laughs> this could have been dra- dragged on and on. And it's just and not. I don't know about white tears. Man, the most dangerous weapon is white tears. That, 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 that stuff is dangerous. If you're a black person, you know what I mean by white tears, man. That can, that, that can, like, historically, that has not gone well for us. So, you know, and, and now, you know what I mean? So, you're correct. Like, I'm so happy that, um, that there was a video, there was evidence. Cause at first, you're like, damn, Brittany's saying how she got hit. She got like, the, remember the reports when it came out? I'm like, whoa, security mm-hmm. attacked her. You look, you're like, he didn't attack you, Brittany. You re- you you literally went into his head, into his hand. Mm-hmm. Like you you went into the man's hand. <laughs> like, right. 
And like it's funny job that the, secure. You, like, the, so the, the narrative changed after the right? video. No. It, it changed crazy. Yo, it's insane. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. man. Anyways. All right. Now, DJ, let's put this episode in the books. Y'all, that was a good rookie show. If you had a good time, you know how we do. So Fahim, um, as everyone knows, it's a shout out, shout out, shout out. My shout out is to a couple of baseball players. So for those who don't know, the Home Run Derby is All-Star Weekend in MLB. Yes, um, I, I didn't watch it. Don't ask me. I just read about it because I ain't watching baseball at this time. I watch baseball in the playoffs. I'll admit to that. But I may catch a game here and there, but I'm not an avid baseball fan. But I do follow the sport, follow the updates and so forth. Um, you know, prayers up to um, Trout, who got injured. I think he missed a couple. I think he's out for a while. So I know he got hurt. A couple guys on that team got hurt as well. But pick up a few guys. So Seattle Mariners, uh, Julio Rodriguez, he broke the single round home derby record with 41. 41. That's insane. <laughs> Big up to that, brother. And then Toronto Blue Jay star, Vladdy Jr. wins the 2023 home run derby. Keep in mind, keep in mind for him, his father won that too it's like father like son they're both home run derby champions so big up to them big up to vladdy doing his thing nice it. nice and let's land there all right nelly j let's put this episode in the books y'all that was the good rookie show if you had a good time and you enjoyed yourself please like and subscribe and talk to my pro friend for you we are on all platforms if you're looking for us you know what it is it's the good rookie show. And we out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.